for takeoff. We are cleared for takeoff. Five, four, three, two, one. Time to take flight in your community and in your life. This is Audio Airstrike. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Everett Hall McNeil, and this is Audio Airstrike. Thank you for being here and joining us once again. And I have a reoccurring guest with me at this time. He is a counselor, a youth pastor, and a great friend in his own right. Uh, he has helped out a lot of people, impacting the youth every day. Ladies and gentlemen, with me at this time, a good friend of mine for 10 plus years. Ivan Morris Jr. is with us. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. Man, the pleasure is all mine. It's always, uh, it's always a blessing to come on here and, and have a, you know, and, and chop it up. I always appreciate uh, just being on here and all the great work you do, giving you your flowers because, man, you are the jack of all trades, y'all. And I know most of your listeners already know that, but this guy, Everett, I've known him for a long time. Went to uh, school together and pretty much been hit off ever since. And just to watch you grow and what you do for other people and how big your heart is, bro, like, you definitely deserve your flowers, and I can't wait to see what you, uh, you know, a guy can continue to do through you, bro. So, like, I'm just blessed to be on here and be, you know, and just know you personally. So, <laughs> hey, man, I don't take I don't I don't take any of that for granted. I'm definitely thankful for the flowers that you've given, but also I'm thankful for our friendship, and our friendship is very unique because we're kind of similar in a lot, a lot of ways. Um, I feel like in our friend group, we are kind of the moral compass to kind of hold things down without like being pressing. Uh, so that is a lot of, uh, it's a lot of responsibility, but we handle it well, especially when it comes to looking out for our friends, which I do, which I do take pride in. But I, I wanted to get to this man, because the reason why I, I wanted to have you on is because of these things, right? And I'm just kind of got to kind of just go through and put all this out here. I have seen the cat williams interview i've seen the monique interview i have seen logic bring his dad on to air his grievances on his platform podcast that he is starting and i've seen people attack other people the second that they get the bag or the second there's a viral moment which brings me kind of to this thing of at, at what point are we going to handle confrontation and the grudges and issues with a certain level of transparency with a certain level of being genuine? And also when, at what point do we let the situation go? Because I'm kind of at a point in my life where it's like, if we're never going to get along and if there's an inkling of us not being friends, not being cool, I think it's just best to go our separate ways and not even try to act like, and you know, not try to act like or fake the funk. It's just one of those things where it's like, we know that we don't mesh well, we are oil and water. So why are we trying to act like that? This is not what it is. Why are we trying to play cute? Why are we trying to go above and beyond to be cordial? I'm not saying start a fight. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying start a quarrel, but at some point you have to assess the situation and go, we're not compatible. This is not going to work. I understand that you understand that. Let's just peacefully go our separate ways and we don't have to speak of each other anywhere else ever again. The problem with that is, is that people know that these platforms want the very thing that some people just don't want to talk about. They want to see the grudges. They want to see the never ending episodes of grudges, beefs, confrontation is what sells. If you look at the NFL, some of the biggest moments have been built off of rivalry, off of hate for another team in Hollywood. It's hate for another actor or actress or somebody who has a certain level of money has the power and the cachet to make stuff happen, a gatekeeper, if you will, of your career in Hollywood. When it comes to even other sports, there are gatekeepers that are in that prize position as well. And my issue is, is that there's a fine line between telling your experiences 
to either give somebody game on what to do and what not to do. And then there's the dogpiling aspect of it. And I'm when I'm seeing this array of events, it, it makes me question with each event, like on what level is this being transparent? On what level is this just doing this for viral, you know, media? At what point are we sitting over here going like, OK, where's the where's the transparency or the, where's the transparency or the genuineness of this? Like, what what is the point? Does somebody want money? Is somebody doing this for clicks and views? Is it a combination of all of this? Like, Ivan, what are your thoughts when you see this array of media or this array of content when people, basically people are getting called out left and right? Uh, I mean, I think a, this is a really good question. And I think you touched on it a little bit on what you just said. And part of it is the fact that drama does sell. The story does sell, the gossip does sell, the drama, the beef, that does sell. People want to hear it. You know, ears are enticed by it. Even if you're not even, even if you're not the most drama filled person, it's still interesting. It's something that gets you wondering. You know what I mean? And that's what people want to hear. Cause in one facet, I get it because if someone spoke about you on a public platform, then I get you want to address whatever's been spoke about you on a public platform. So one instance, I get it. Because I do believe people do have a right to defend their character. You know what I mean? Like if you if you feel like your character has been trashed or tarnished or someone's lying on you or whatever the case may be, I do think to a certain point you do have a right to defend your character. But on the same token, you kind of alluded to it in what you just said just now. Like, are you really trying to be transparent, share your side of the story, be transparent, or are you just furthering the drama, getting the attention and the likes and the clicks? Because that stuff matters. It, like, it really does matter. And I think what I'm afraid of, and, you know, and I like Uncle, like Uncle Shay, Uncle, but his podcast is starting to turn very dramatic, if you will. It's getting a little dramatic. Or getting more, it's, it's starting to, I feel like, and, I, and, and to a certain point, I do think, Shannon is trying to give people the right to speak for themselves. I know, like, because I didn't get it. I didn't watch Monique's podcast. I didn't watch when she was on there. Um, I did watch Cat. I did watch the whole Cat interview. And then I know Mike Epps and Shannon were beefing. I'm, I mean, I, I saw clips kind of them responding, but I'm not exactly sure what that is about. So I don't want to speak directly to Monique and the, the uncle and Mike Epps beef because I didn't really watch all of that. So I don't want to talk about something I didn't know. But I did watch the Cat majority of the cat interview so i think the question to really to ask is and that's what we're talking about is how do we go about handling issues problems these conflicts things like that because conflict isn't necessarily a bad thing it's how you handle it it becomes a bad thing or how much you put it out there on the forefront and promote it it could be a bad thing but conflict itself isn't a bad thing because conflict is a part of life you're going to have conflict with people, your loved ones, your family. Like sometimes your family members can be the, some of the worst people you have conflict with. You know what I mean? So conflict is part of life. But I just think that as people, as, especially as grownups, I think we do a bad example, especially for the youth and for the next generation, of how we handle conflict sometimes. Right? Because do we actually try to contact the person off script. Like, do we actually try to mend it outside of public eyes? I don't think every conflict deserves to be out there judged by the whole world. Like, I don't think that really does anybody good. It can further divide people and fans and things like that. Like, sometimes it's, well, I think majority of the time it's better to handle off cut. And I know a biblical principle, and I know I get it, I know everyone's not a believer in Christ and things like that. But I do believe Jesus do addresses how to handle conflict very appropriately in that where you know you're talking about more of like a, a church type of thing like how you handle conflict but you know going directly to the person you have conflict with that's the first step you know not gossiping about it right so someone else can go spread about what's happening but if someone did something to offend you or whatever the case may be go to them talk to them have a conversation about it right after you process and clear your emotions if that doesn't work 
bring somebody who is trustworthy, someone who won't pick sides to handle the situation, you know, to, to talk and to handle the situation and to mediate and things like that. And I think what that does is it gives you a chance for both parties to talk, to express their opinions and come to whatever conclusion they want to come to. But even as adults, we don't communicate properly. You know, that's a huge issue. It's not just for relationship and couples. It can also be friendships. It can also be relationships with your family and friends and things like that. And we don't communicate properly, period, as people. We just don't. In our community, we just don't communicate properly. We don't know how to express our feelings. And that could come from how you grew up. It could come from what environment you was raised in. It comes from many different things, right? And I think I believe that's why people can't communicate. Because I think that's the, the main reason why conflict does start is because of communication between both parties. Because you've seen in, in, in history's past where, whether it was like rap beats or something like that, it was always a miscommunication type thing, and then it blows up out of proportion because the wrong person says something to the, another wrong person, and then it spreads. And now you got this conflict going. Sometimes you're not even knowing exactly how it started. And things like that. So to me, it just it's just a, a repeated cycle of not knowing how to communicate, not knowing how to express your thoughts to the other party. And then once you start getting social media and public platforms involved, whatever you put out there, you're putting up there for public opinion, whether you like it or not. You know what I mean? And then once you get everyone chiming in and things like that, then that's when things can go haywire and stuff still doesn't really get resolved. Um so I think I hope that at least answers some of the questions. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's one of those things where I look at this issue and go, okay, there's two people or a group of people against one or two groups of people that may have a disagreement. The problem with that is, is not the fact that they're having the disagreement. It's the fact that there is a lack of accountability. Uh -huh. That is the biggest that is the biggest thing that leads to the confrontation getting more heightened and causing uh -huh. more strife for years. There have been moments, there have been plenty of stories where we have seen comedians, we've seen entertainers, we've seen people pick it you name it we've seen them in front of the camera don't matter what they do they have been they can be entertainers they can be political people they can even be church going people there are certain things that have happened where for years there was a confrontation and because somebody did not take part in a certain level of accountability that person was uh -huh. like nope i don't want to deal with this i don't want to deal with them and as far as i'm concerned look i'm out I'm not going to get through to this person. I have been in situations where I have confronted people and because they did not take the proper accountability and just basically blamed it all on me. I had no choice. Even me. I had no choice but to be like, I can't associate with this person. I just can't. What? Not what? Be it's not because I 100 percent think that I'm right all the freaking time. It's the fact I think the biggest reason why people push away when it comes to confrontation or just completely is like disown the person is because there's nobody or at least there's there's really no sense of accountability that's what pushes people away if the person that you had a confrontation with was like look man look woman i i did xyz and I agree that that was messed up. And this is where I was coming from at the time. I'm not making no excuses for me, but this is what happened. And hopefully you don't hold it against me, but this is what happened. I think this is what caused this. Nobody wants to have that type of transparency because nobody likes to admit 100% that they're wrong. It takes a special, it takes a special type of person to go, you know what? I was wrong. I was upset. I did X, Y, Z. I ignored this for these reasons. And for that, I do apologize. Today's age, especially, and I hate to say this because I haven't hit it on the head earlier. The older generation, and that is now including us, considering now we're in our 30s. As crazy as that is to say. <laughs> um, I think at times we do not lead the best example of how to handle conflict 
Now, I think there are more than one way. There's more than one way to handling conflict. And there's more than one way to resolve it. That all the time, I mean, all the time, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you're going to forgive the person and then y'all going to be having dinner together. That's not 100% what it means. It may come to a situation where that person is like, look, I did X, Y, Z, and I apologize about it. Okay, I did X, Y, Z, and I apologize about it. But where I'm at in my life, obviously, we think on two different paths that are not going to mesh. So let's just cut ties right here, really not associate with each other because we don't bring out the best in each other. That's just a reality situation. That kind of conversation and that example for handling and problem solving conflict doesn't get passed down to the next generation because nobody is there to be the example of it. So when you don't have that many, when your only example of confrontation is your nieces, aunts, nephews beefed for 20 some years and never got over it, the dude that was bullying it, bullying you at school just kept doing it, never apologized. You held on to a grudge for years and years and years. They didn't grown up mature, forgot about it. You still holding on to it and it's bringing you down. And, but there's no sense of communication. The reason boils back to there wasn't an example in your life to show you how to handle confrontation. Yeah. It, yeah. They showed you how to put a Band-Aid on it, to not show it, yeah. not show emotion, not be expressive about your confrontation. Because yeah. some of y'all, like, and I've been there, there have people that have wronged me, and because it came blindsided at me, I did not know how to communicate that, that I was offended. Because I'm walking around throughout, you know how it is. You doing your daily routine, you're doing yep. XYZ, you're focused on that. All of a sudden, this person, man, woman, or child, or even child, decides that they're going to snake you today. Yeah. It's catching you off guard. So you can't really in your brain in your brain articulate what you really want to say until weeks, years later, which yeah. that causes potential resentment issues, problems, and could make the confrontation heightened. That person could have even said, yo, I'm sorry. Now I will say this. If they blindsided you with that and then say it, I saw it right afterwards. I do question that fast apology. I do question that to a degree. Ivan, would you question that if you were in that situation? I mean, I'm the type of person, I'm questioning, period. Like, mm -hmm. I think no one has critical thinking skills at all. So I feel like if you're a fan of somebody, you're just going to believe them and believe what they say, even if it doesn't even sound even if it can sound even far fetched, you're just gonna take the word at it. And I get it, you won't be trustworthy, you don't think everyone's lying. But I just have I just think differently and, and think like because even with even with the Cat Williams interview, some of the stuff he even said, I'm like, uh, I don't know about that one. Or uh I can look that up and see if that's it. You know what I mean? And I get people like Cat, people hate the industry, you know, the industry is demonic and eat so-called exposed and stuff and stuff like that. So we on that train. So like, even if you're not saying everything accurate, we love the rest of the things that he's saying. So, you know, it's all great and dandy. But to me, if you're willing to lie about even pieces of it, then to me, that's not trustworthy. If you ask me. But the bigger spectrum, I, I like what you said, was the accountability piece. Um, And I think we all, we're in, a, in, a, in an era where uh, victim mentality is a common thing. Where we want to be the victim, the vic like we just want to be the victim. No matter what we do, oh, I did this action only because this happened to me. You know what I'm saying? So it justifies what I did because you did this to me. You said this about me. You did this, this, and this, right? So it justifies what I did because of something you done to me. Which, regardless of what happened to you, right? I'm not, you know, disregarding that because there's real things that happen to people, say to people, things like this. So, I, so on one hand, yes, but 
that also doesn't mean you still do just as wrong as a thing to the next person. And sometimes we do it worse because of how bad somebody did. You know, two wrongs don't make a right no matter how much we want to kind of paint the picture of in this victim type of thing. So within the victim mentality, just because this happened to me, now I can go out and do X, Y, and Z and do it worse, but it's okay because this thing type kind of happened to me, right? Because at the end of the day, especially when we're talking about cat, we're talking about Monique, we're talking about these people, like these, they, not everyone did everything the way they're supposed to. Not everybody handled the situation they're supposed to. You know, it's not my job to figure out who's 100% right, who's 100% wrong. But the accountability piece is right because everyone has a part to play in conflict. You can't have a one-person conflict. That doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't work that way. You can't have a conflict against yourself or a conflict against somebody else. Someone has to least participate in, in some degree. So everybody didn't do right in a situation. There has to be a mature thing that you do as a grown-up and say, look, I know I didn't do everything right. I know I didn't handle this right, this, that, and the third. And that's something I can do better, right, in this situation. And I do believe, like, when it comes to accountability, when it comes to the victim mentality, that's what fuels a lot of these shows. That's what fuels what a lot of these podcasts and things like podcasts talk about the same stuff. They talk about the same thing. Ain't nothing new. Same garbage stuff they always be talking on every other podcast. And sometimes, like, and Shannon, sometimes, I'm, sometimes I like his feedback, and I do like how he lets the like the interviewer talk because I don't like watching people who, who interviews people and they don't let them talk and they come off. So I do respect him when he lets interviewers talk. I like Shannon for doing it, but I also wish he would push back and challenge a little more. You know what I mean? Like challenge a little more. Get them to actually think that they miss something along the along the way of where they're at today. Because sometimes we're not challenged to actually think. We're we, we're just challenged. We're just around people who always say the things we want to hear. Sometimes, or always saying things that uh, that are to our liking, but never saying things to actually challenge us. Because challenging you, pushing back a little bit, actually helps you grow in a lot of situations. So sometimes I just wish, like, it, it, a lot of interviewers, they do, they will, like, they will push back and just ask some challenging questions, like, and I do appreciate that. But I know specifically for these, you know, podcasts, I wish they were a little more challenging on some of these things because I think it's also good to reflect on how you look and handle situations as well because, as you said, there is accountability that both people need to take ownership of, which a lot of people don't like it. And like you said, it's a generational thing. So now the younger generation is seeing that because our generation, we grew up in an era where we weren't allowed to express ourselves to our parents. We couldn't express ourselves as what they said and that was it. So that just trickles down because we didn't know how to express disagreements. Not saying that we want to be disrespectful to our parents, but expressing how we're feeling about a situation, have a conversation, dialogue, and that's what's missing. So now we suppress feelings. So now we don't know how to communicate conflict. We're just told to be quiet, stuff like that. So now we'll be handling our friends and things like that. Now we get to our kids, they're starting to see that. And it, it, it's magnified now because of social media and what's being put out there. Um, so, I, w- I mean, like, I would just say, I mean, I would just put it plainly like that. Like, as black, especially as black people, we have a history of having attention for the wrong reasons. Like, this is not good publicity. It's not a good look either way, I think. It's not a good look. Really, for Cat, for Monique, anything like that, even though you're speaking your truth and you're saying your side of the story and you're defending yourself and your character, like I said, I have no issue with that, problem with that, per se. I really don't. Because I think, I think to a certain point, there there is times when you can speak on certain things. I like I get it, right? Like I said, I don't really know the whole movie situation well, so I'm not gonna really talk more towards that. But even more towards Cat because Cat's been a lot of people say a lot of stuff about Cat. So I so I get it. I think there's a way they should defend yourself. There's a way to defend yourself. Right? Like with the way Cat defended himself, was it in a way that was that doesn't add more fuel to the fire? Or was he saying things, making jokes, alluding, saying off the wallish things? And bring in even other people that's not even part of the conversation. 
Like he put, even started naming a whole bunch of people that's not even in the conversation, just throwing them in there because of a brass idea. Like it, it came from something like, okay, you're speaking your side of the story to now it's a mess. Now you get all these clips and views because of other drama that you're starting versus why you started, why you on there in the first place. You know what I mean? And I think that could be our, like his actions and how he further on carried the conversation took over the real reason why he was on there and why he was there to speak whatever he was speaking to. So, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely uh, pick up what you're putting down because the reality of the situation is, is that it's okay to have your, your story. It's okay to put out your perspective. And the one thing that I tell people all the time, I'm like, you can sit over there and put out your perspective, but make sure if you're going to put it out there, make sure it's something that somebody can learn from, but also make sure that it's something fruitful. Also make sure and understand that you do have to understand the, the potential aftermath of what you're saying publicly. There is a dialogue that needs to be had among us uh, African-Americans sometimes because sometimes we we hate the act of a public lynching but some of us will still show up to see it and I know that's kind of a harsh I know that's kind of a harsh way of saying it but when we talk about each other to a degree. And trust me when I tell you, I'm not saying everybody's going to be kumbaya. I'm not that naive. I totally understand that if it's a situation where, look, I have tried to be as nice and as graceful as I can, and it has not helped one iota ever I'm done. I totally understand. You have that right. But you have to to let it all the way go the subliminal message has got to stop if you're done with that person if i'm done with somebody i don't bring them up at all until somebody brings it up to me and then i'm like look i don't associate with that person i don't even bring up his name that's when somebody's truly done i feel like I feel like when I keep hearing, and this is not a slight towards anybody, I don't know these people personally, I was not there for the issues that they went through, I'm just speaking in general. When somebody talks about certain things from 30 to 20 years back, I do kind of raise an eyebrow and go, was it a situation where you had the conversation? What was the what was the solution behind it? And if there wasn't a solution behind it, at least inform the public that yes, I did have a confrontation with that person. I did have a conflict with that person. And I have realized that we are both oil and water and I refuse to speak on that person further. That's just what it is, folks. Like, at least that's transparent. That tells me, at least you're going to say, look, I'm not denying that I had that. I, I'm not denying that I didn't have problems with this person. I'm not denying that I'm not the biggest fan of this person. However, it's been 20 years. I'm trying to move on. And I just don't feel like talking about this dude ever again. Or I don't feel like talking about this girl ever again. Or I don't feel like talking about this group ever again. Like... I've seen interviews where Dame Dash is like, look, I don't want to talk about Jay-Z right now. Uh Uh-huh. That's right. He's really the only one I've seen, and I'll give him kudos for being like, I had my conflicts with Jay-Z in the past. He's like, look, this has been talked about for 20, 30 years now. I just don't want to talk about it. I've literally watched interviews where he's like, I just don't want to talk about that anymore. I'm in a different headspace. So... The, the the reality of the situation is, folks, is like as as and I'm and I know a lot of people listen to this show, but for Afri- my African American people, there's nothing wrong with being we're you know, being like you're done with somebody. But at a certain point, you can't keep talking about the same thing for over twenty, twenty five years because people are just going to assume 
and make assumptions that you're not over it still. If you can still break down every detail and granted, I get it. It was, it could have been a traumatic experience and I totally understand that. I know people go through different situations for different things. I'm not trying to minimize anybody's hurt, but where does the process of healing start? If you keep rehashing the same things over and over again. Now, if it's a bigger issue and the problem persists and you are speaking out on it. Okay. I get that. If it's something dealing with sexual or physical domestic abuse, okay, I understand why you are doing that, why you are telling your story and why you are trying to help people. Okay, I get all that. But if it's a tiff about like, if it's a tiff about I didn't get this role for this reason, if it's a tiff about he ain't let me on this stage, he ain't do this, he ain't do that, he ain't look out for me, he ain't do this. The situations we're talking about. Right. It's... It's it's we are in 2024 and I know there are people that are older than me that are being going like, well, it was different when I came up. I was like, yeah, but the thing about it is with social media, with these platforms that you have now, there is nothing that is stopping you from creating the platforms that you want to create. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all, but heads have to build their own table. At some point. And I'm going to be honest with you. There are very few people that do things for the lookout. Very few people. Because the people that I hate to break it to y'all. Some of the people that do these things for the lookout for certain people. Some of them got robbed too. Some of them got stories of people that did them wrong. So because of the penalty and the actions of somebody else. It has caused that person that was opening that door to be a little bit more selective and a little bit more stingy with the opportunities because he was hurt, too. So at what point does the cycle stop? Because it's not just the entertainers that get hurt an agent gets hurt. Even a boss to a degree can get hurt. Think about it. Think about your uh, I'm not trying to shoot no bail for. A evil boss. I'm talking about a decent boss that actually looks out for people. Do you know how many times that potential owner, that manager, that boss that looks out for people actually has a good heart has been stabbed in the back before? Do you know how many stories that person can come up with? That person is on your team, supposedly. And they just stabbed you in the back last week. They tried to get you fired two weeks ago. Like, I mean, like I'm, I'm the reason why I'm having this conversation, Ivan, is because I look at some of this stuff and I look at, for example, I'll even bring this up. I saw the logic. I saw a part of logic segment where he was talking, you know, talking about his dad who wasn't there in his life. I'm going to say this right now. I've said it once before and I'll say it again. You guys have got to stop putting your family members' business out there on social media for people yeah. to consume. It is not yeah. for everybody to consume. No, they, that's true. That's not entertainment. That's not content. That's just mess. Yeah. I've had yeah, issues <laughs> in the past with family members. Some things I don't agree with that they've done. Some things that I just don't subscribe to. If I have an issue with that, I'm coming to talk and to speak to them. I'm not making a social media post. Call me old school. Call it what you want. I call it being very forward to people. If I have an issue with something, I will address it. Yeah. If I have problems with somebody and if it's a situation in the midst where it's not the right time to address it, then it's not the right time to address it. That does not mean I won't address it when it's the right time because I will. 
I, I tell people all the time, man, sometimes I watch that logic interview with his father who wasn't in his life. I cringed on a couple parts because one, why is this an episode on the platform? Two, was this the reason why you even did this anyway was to get people talking? And if that was the reason, it was pretty gross. Um, and if this was the goal, like, I'm going to be honest with you. I respectfully disagree with that intent of turning that into content. I think it was that, in my personal opinion, Ivan, that was a gross way of doing content. I'm not bringing my family member on. I don't care how much beef I got with them. I'm not bringing my family member on and putting them to the fire in front of the entire Internet. I'm not doing that. Even if I really don't like that family member, I'm not doing that. I'd rather have a face-to-face -face conversation in the privacy so whatever is said is between us. The Internet don't need to know my business. No, I agree 100%. Uh, I think... I think we we post. I'm an avid for this. I think people post too much personal stuff on social media anyway, and I think people need to find a better way to vent their issues than social media. Um, whether it's therapy, whether it's somebody they trust is something, find somebody else other than social media. I mean, because the reason why you post stuff, no matter what it is, no matter who it is, no matter what, it is because you want people to see it. Like you can't say I don't care about people seeing stuff. I, mean, I don't really care about people's opinions, but you, like, you post that. If you're posting something, you want people to see it. That's the whole point of social media. You type a status, you type a picture, a post, you want people to see it or read it. Like, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you, like, I think it's funny when people be like, oh, I don't care about attention, I don't care about this, like, I don't care what people react, but you're, you're posting things for people to see. Like, that doesn't that doesn't co you can't those don't really coexist when it comes to social media so if you're posting personal issues or anything like that or you, you want people to see it even if you're posting a joke you want people to see it and laugh with you like that's the whole point of social media when you're posting stuff so you can't for one take you can't just say uh oh i don't care about people's opinions or whatever people say and this that and then turn around and blast and as you said and put stuff on social media um we have to just learn better how to vent off of line. Like, online is not supposed to be our event session all the time. I can see if it's a situational thing. Because I don't mind people being transparent about stuff when it's situational. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether you're being interviewed, where you're sharing a testimony, where you're sharing something. Like, there's there's times to do it. I ain't saying don't ever do it. Like, there's times to do it. Because I've, I've done it to a certain degree. I mean, I don't really vet my personal issues online. I've never do that. Um, you know, because th thankfully, I do have people I can go to to do that. But, it doesn't really help your case as much because not saying that people really don't care, but it's dangerous when you put that information out there. Cause once it's out there, it's out there and people can do it with it as they, as they will. And I just think we, we have to learn better how to handle these things, like how to handle our emotions, how to process, how to rant. We need to do these things offline, off status, off a browser, off the internet. Like you need a more secure, safe place to do these things and i think we post too much stuff as it is and i get it's content like i it, it, you know your emotions in your personal life that's not content for the world that should be content for the world but i get there's content creators and they got different themes and brands and stuff like that yes for that type of stuff yes you post a lot of that. that's your content that's your brand but your own personal issues struggles beats you have with family members things like that that's not content that's not some. that's not content that's deeper than that like, there's no dollar bill amount for that. And, you know, we have to find a way to vent those issues, to to be able to process, to learn how to uh, handle conflict. And I think that's really what the thing is, right? Because regardless of the opinion of who's right and who's wrong, the real question is how do you properly handle conflict? Because if you're not taught that, that means you have to be, you have to learn it. Because we go, we can talk about people shouldn't handle this, this, and this, but are we really giving people application to learn how to do these things? Because I think people do a great job of complaining and, and and identifying what's wrong and what's the issue, but how well we are of giving people tools to handle 
like to properly handle conflict and things like that. Like, how, how are we really giving people tools to do that? I don't think we do that well enough. I, I really don't. I don't think we do that well enough. Um, so we got to do a better job of equipping ourselves, equipping other people on how to handle conflict. Because the only way people will actually handle conflict better is they learn how to do it. They got the tools to do it. And give people the right tools to do it. Because there's not enough people giving the people the right... There's not enough people out here giving the right tools to handle conflict. Like, we got the tools to, to, to air out people. We got the tools to blast people. We have the tools to uh, to vent and to show our emotions online. But we don't have the tools to properly handle conflict when it comes. So that's why you see all these different... Because some people might some people might not have nowhere to go. I get it. Some people have nowhere to go. They feel like this is their only option to handle these things in this type of way, right? But the thing is, it's not really helping. Like, sure, it gets some air out of your chest, but the thing is, that wound is there. And unless you attain to the wound and to the actual problem, as you said earlier, it's just a Band-Aid covering an open wound until we give people the tools to actually learn how to handle conflict in the right way because it's something that we're going to deal with through the course of our lives. Sometimes it's repairable and sometimes it's not repairable, right? And that's a fine, you know, because not everybody in your life is supposed to go where you're going. Some people might be in your life seasonally. Like, we like we get all that. But I think we just need to, or people need to be more advocate to building better ways to handle conflict. And the thing is, we're not going to get that from celebrities. That's one thing people, us, we got to understand like we put too much faith and hope in celebrities and we always care about what they're doing we're always caring about this different stuff and we're complaining about them but that but that but the end of the day that's like the 10 percent we're not them they're not supposed to be do, doing these things for us we're not like we put too much faith and hope in celebrities who don't even know us who don't even care about us and really most of the time they're not really helping anybody on the day to day like the way we look at celebrities, like is it, that? I think that's an issue. That's another topic for another conversation. The way we look at celebrities for everything, like they're the standard. Like they're the standard. Like that, they're the standard. How you move just because they're richer than you. You know what I mean? And I think that's a that's a whole that's another that, that can be another topic for another uh, podcast episode in itself. Or how we look at new celebrities, but yeah, <laughs> I will. I will probably definitely bring you back for that. Probably that episode. So we'll definitely keep in touch for that. <laughs> But uh, the one thing I'll say is this, is I, I think Ivan is right on the money in terms of some of the stuff that we do and how we react to what people are doing, why they're doing it, you know, what is going on, why are they going about it this way, why are they using these tactics? And I think the reality of the situation is, folks, is that we need to dial in on what do we want what are our barriers and what are we not willing to compromise? If you don't have the answer to those questions or you don't have those barriers put in place, you are going to struggle knowing how to navigate a confrontation and finding a solution within the confrontation. And sometimes that solution is not necessarily is you know, you guys right back at it like nothing happened. You don't have that same friendship, that same brotherhood, that same sistership, that same uh, kinship with somebody. Everybody's different. You know, some people mix well. Some people mix well like bread and butter. Other people mix like oil and water. It is totally, totally different for everybody. Everybody has different personalities and not all those personalities mesh. And so the one thing that I will say is that we have to do a better job overall as a whole to understand how to navigate through confrontation because nine times out of 10, you are going to face some type of confrontation, whether it is a family member, whether it is a coworker, whether it is somebody in your friend group, whether it is somebody that's an acquaintance, you are going to come across confrontation and how you react to it not just talks is not it's it's one of those things where 
how you react to it is not just about what they did to you. It's how you react to what they did. Yeah. Yeah. Your character is going to be tested when you get hit with confrontation. Because there's part of you that's going to want to, there's part of you that's going to want to go, yo, I'm literally about to slap this person. Mm-hmm. How are you going to navigate that? Because you could be in a situation where you can't afford to lose your livelihood over a slap. Mm-hmm. Will Smith can recover. You can't. <laughs> Thanks. The, the the bag is a little different and I'm not trying mm-hmm. to call nobody broke or this and that or less than because you know the you know but I'm saying don't look at it just from a money standpoint but look at it also from a personality standpoint look at it from a spiritual standpoint look at it from a a reputation standpoint yeah. if you're the most level headed person in your group I'm not yeah. saying you can't show emotion I'm not saying you have to hide your feelings but do it in a way that's productive so everybody clearly understands and knows this is my line. And if you cross that line, it's a problem. No, that does not mean I'm shooting the whole block up. It means that I have to cut ties with yeah. said people. If this line is hit in the middle of this confrontation, I'm not doing a whole lot of social media talk. Oh, this person's a bum. Oh, this person's a snake. He did this. He did that. But if somebody comes up to me and goes, Everett, why are you treating? Well, yo, why are we not talking? Why did you just cut me off? Why did you did this? I said, you did X, Y, and Z. And that goes against my standard and my boundaries. You went above it. You constantly, you constantly went over and above to disrespect me. I can't allow that. I can't allow that. So I just cut my, I, I put I I distance myself away from you. I got you. Don't two. have to even share all that, right? To be honest, you don't, you don't have to even give people all that. Just say, you know, some situations happen, and we just had to step apart, and then keep it like that. You don't right. even have to give people explanations. Like right. we just we just you know things things happened, and we just went our separate ways, and I have nothing against them. That's it. Right. That's all people even need to know right. half the time. Right. But I think I think the reason why I think the reason why I'm I'm I put a little extra on it because I'm I think what a lot of people struggle with we are known for being nice giving people and when we give so much and give so much and give so much mm. and when we get in that confrontation it's like the level of disrespect feels heightened because you didn't gave right. so much and you were super nice and you tried to just like I'm trying to be diplomatic and you keep feeding me with disrespect. So uh-huh. there's been moments even in my life I've had to literally go you cross this line here and I'm through. I'm done. I said I'm uh-huh. I don't wish no death on you. I said I don't have no ill will towards you, but I can't be associated with you. Right. What you did put a sour taste in my mouth. And I can't allow anybody to think that they can treat me any type of way and there isn't a penalty for that. Right. That does not mean a fight. That does not mean somebody's getting a bullet in their head. That does not mean any type of physical or 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 threatening altercation. That does not what that means. Right. That means I have a boundary, respect the boundary, or we're just gonna cut ties. It's plain and simple. So yeah. the reason why I kind of went on that is to show people you can stand up for yourself, but it doesn't have to resort to calling out somebody's name. Right. A, a lot of people are can will sit over there. And if you say because you can't give with certain people, you can't give them room to just, you know, cop out. Like if I started cussing somebody out, the conversation is not you disrespecting me. It's I cussed you out now. You get what I'm saying? So if I go and I say you disrespected me in these ways and I did not like it. So I had to do this. Now they can't say, well, ever just cussed me out. It was like, no, ever said this, this, this and that. See, now we're getting down to the root. We're not doing we're not doing a smoke screen where you just focused on how I came at you. I told you literally what it was. I articulated it to you. And I also did it 
in a very diplomatic but very direct tone so you understand how serious this is. Mm -hmm. And that partly those tactics will help somebody handle a confrontation the right way without getting yourself a daggone criminal record. (laughs) Because I don't want somebody else doing that. I think the bigger pill you have to swallow is sometimes we have to learn. Well, I know this is this is more of like a Christian saying, but hey, it, it works. But sometimes you just have to let God defend you in certain situations. Yep. And what I mean by that is that at the end of the day, you can plead your case to the cows come home. You can get red in the face. You can say X, Y, and Z, say your case. And guess what? People still have an opinion of you anyway. Mm-hmm. Especially once you put it out there on front street. People will have an opinion anyway, no matter what you say, no matter what you do. We have to learn to get to a point in our life that we we can't let what other people say get, get us down, pretty yeah. much. Like, people are going to have their opinion, let them think what they want to think, and just keep it pushing. You know, sometimes we get, you know, it's good to defend yourself, but sometimes you can overdo it, too. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, trying to doing too much work to defend yourself. Trying to appear on every podcast, talking about the same thing over and over and over again. Send out the same tweets and stuff like that. Like once you say your piece, people and most of the time people already no matter how many times they hear this, people already got they, they what they want to judge. Like they already know. Like most of the time they already gonna have a side. Like most people don't cri- like critically think and actually listen, open and honestly, no matter how they like the person, and can come off with a judgment based off how they hear the information. Most of the time they already like you or something like that. They, they, they're gonna stick on the side no matter what information, facts or whatever yeah. is out there. So sometimes, and well, I'm not gonna say sometimes. All the time, you get to the point in your life where, regardless of what people might say or what people still might think, it's still not going to disturb me and live in my life or this person. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna drive yourself crazy, always trying to be on the defense mode, trying to convince people. Because your job should be to try to convince people your side. You put your side out there. You protect yourself. You say what you said. Some people still not going to agree with you. Like, you got to come into groups with that. People are not going to agree with you. People, some people are still going to see the other person's side. And you know what? That's fine. Mm-hmm. People can base whatever opinion they want. Cool. That doesn't mean they're right. Clearly. It doesn't mean they're right. That doesn't mean they know exactly what's going on. People are, people make decisions all the time. off fact, Not off facts a lot. It could be off emotion. It could be off because I just like this person. I just have loyalty to this person. So even though... The facts can be way more on your side. It can make a lot more sense. They'll still support somebody just just because. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to just live life. Like after you said your piece, after you tried all the possible ways you can resolve the conflict, once you've tried it, move on with your life, put it in God's hands, and don't allow people in situations to try to bring you back in. Because you mentioned David Dash. When they're always talking about Jay-Z, after a million years, People are still trying to talk to him about Jay-Z. Why are they still trying to talk to him about Jay-Z? Because they want a reaction out of him. That's the only reason why they're bringing it up. Because he had a reputation of being a hothead and blowing up and all this other different stuff. But there were many reasons why he was like that, right? But they know he has that reputation and had the reputation. And he know, and everyone knows Jay-Z is a sensitive subject. So the media or people who are interviewing, they're going to... Probably for the rest of his life, he's going to have to deal with that. No matter who he talks to, unfortunately, they're going to still bring up Jay-Z. They can be 80 years old, and they're still going to bring up about Jay-Z. Because the fact is, there wasn't really closure that people wanted to see. Or, on top of it, it's still a little bit of drama, if you will. But, I think David Dash got to the point where he understands, like, he said his piece multiple times. He said what he said. And people are still going to make their opinions anyway. People are going to like Jay no matter what he did. It doesn't matter. People are just going to like him. But and he already knows what happened in the situation because there's only three people that know. It's Jay, it's Dave, and it's God. Who knows all the situations that happened. So at the end of the day, Dave was like, I said what I said. I'm not going to keep dwelling. I'm not going to keep overly defending myself. I'm good. Y'all can think what you want because it doesn't matter. No matter what I say or how I say it or what proof I put out there, it's not going to change your mind anyway. You're going to waste your time overly doing it. Your job is not to convince people. So sometimes, oh, I'm sorry, let me stop saying sometimes. All the time, you need to learn 
to move on and to walk away with a decision and learn that you can't change people's mind. And that's okay if you can't change people's mind. Because at the end of the day, you said your piece. You try to handle it. Most problems you can. You might not always got it right. Cool. But you tried it. You did it. Now, I'm going to move on with my life. No matter what this person say, They try to bring up about it. I'm pushing it away. I'm pushing it off. That's not, I'm not about that anymore. I'm not talking about it. I already brought it up. Things like that. Right? Because people are only bring it up to get a reaction for you to talk about it again. That's the only reason why. Not that they really care about it. Y'all handling it, trying to, you know, come back together. But just because it could be drama, you could vent, you could do all this other different stuff and things like that. So you just got to learn how to actually move on. You got to learn how to move on. Like That's part of the process of handling conflict is learning how to say your piece, move on, and stop being disturbed by it. And not trying to change people's opinion because they already got their opinions made on you anyway. So Yeah, absolutely, man. I definitely agree. Definitely agree. Well, but I want to thank you first off, Ivan, for coming on. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. I do not take it for granted. This has been a great discussion. Uh, hopefully, you guys took so away something from this discussion. Uh, because, you know, the reality of the situation is we all struggle with conflict at times. Uh-huh. And we need to f- figure out a better way to navigate through it. So, Ivan, I want to thank you for coming on. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on, and you know you always more than welcome to come on. Hey, I appreciate the invite always, brother. Like I always appreciate the invite. So thank you for having me on. And these are the convers- these are the conversations people should be engaging in. These are the conversations we should be talking about. How to actually properly handle these things, identifying that there's problems on many different fronts, and how we if you do the hard work and actually do it you actually learn and grow way more out of it than you just contributed to the same old mess that's out here. So I appreciate you wanting to have this conversation and to talk. And, you know, even though this type of thing won't even get a lot of clicks because it's not promoting something crazy or anything like that, but it's going to touch the right and plant the right seeds in the right people that watch it. And that's all that matters. Yeah. I think, uh, I think if people really dialed in and focus on what mattered, Instead of what went viral, I think we'd be in a totally good spot. And I'm going to just leave it. Oh, there. absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, absolutely. I think I think social media would be as polluted as it already is. So that's a whole absolutely. nother that's a whole nother topic over a whole nother. Oh, episode. for sure. So, for sure. Uh, we talked about seven different topics today. Oh, yeah. Seven absolutely. different things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, dude. Yeah, absolutely. So with that being said, this has been another edition of Audio Airstrike. I want to thank Ivan Morris Jr. for coming on. Uh, if you guys want to tap in with him, uh, Ivan, where can they find you at? And also, can you plug your podcast as well that you got going on? Sure, sure. Uh, so my social media, uh, just Ivan Jr., just J U S T Ivan I V A N Jr. on uh, Instagram and all that. Um, and then my podcast is uh, it's called Equipped, Equipped the podcast, and it's on Apple, Spotify, and also on YouTube. Um, and that's just pretty much a platform um, equipping believers in Christ, dealing with all types of issues and things out here in the world, how to like bend your faith. I talk about various different topics and even some pop culture stuff, too. So equip, uh, it's called Equip the Podcast. And that's the name of the podcast. And you find that on YouTube and Spotify, Apple, all that. So. Absolutely. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. And uh, definitely for anybody who's interested and wants to get uh very equipped uh in their spiritual walk definitely reach out to uh, ivan to go check out his podcast uh just go and support him but not just him just you know support the work he's doing he's doing it for a bigger purpose he's doing it to bring god to as many people as possible so there is nothing uh negative about what he's doing it's all positive and i think somebody that is doing that kind of work uh definitely needs all the support uh that we can give him so definitely tune into his podcast when you get a chance and of course, one day, if you'll have me, I'll uh, I might come in as a guest on that show. I still owe you that. Man, one. we need yo. No, nah, we're gonna schedule that because you supposed to been on my joint a long time. Yeah, we're gonna actually schedule that, bro. Because it's been it's been too freaking long. Now nah, we we scheduled. Matter of fact, once we get off here, we we, we scheduling something. We're gonna set in stone so we can get, we can get it popping because it's been way too long. You should have been on my, my podcast, so we get that popping as soon as we get off here. Yeah, cool, man. Let, 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 let me know. Let me know. <laughs> It's very rare that I'm a guest. It's very rare that I'm a guest on anybody else's podcast. Like it's an ultra rare thing. So, well, 
it should be. And you're about to be a big parent to my joint. So, yes, y'all will soon see Everett on there. And we're going we're gonna to come up. Matter of fact, I think I have an idea already. But anyway, so Everett, end, end this. End this already. You know, okay. End this before. <laughs> Well, this has been another edition of Audio Airstrike. For you guys, make sure you check us out on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we are going to be coming out with uh, short-form content. So for those of you who don't have time to watch the full episode, uh, we will be starting to pump out short content for you guys. And also, of course, our regular full episodes will be on YouTube as well. Man, they better stop being lazy and watch it all. They ain't going to watch everything. <laughs> nah, man. Even though the, the small clips is important, I obviously I get that. But watch the whole episode. Don't be one of those people that just watch clips and then take people's opinions and run and make a, your own whole, you know, opinion based off the thirty second clip. Watch the whole thing. This is good content. Stop being lazy. You can binge watch a Netflix show. You can watch thirty, forty minutes. Of this. I don't. No, nah, there's no excuse. Yeah, that's the move, Sorry, though. I'm just letting you know what's out no. here. That's the move, though. <laughs> that's the move. That's what they do. That's what some people do. No hate, but that's what some people do. Well, with that being said, this is another edition of Royal Airstrike. Y'all take care, man. Have a good one.